Hey there, guys. Welcome back to Get Going Fast, where we're getting into this excellent hobby AI in a fairly quick and efficient manner in which you actually might learn something. And today, yo, we are looking at the uh, brand new Hunyuan Image 3.0 model, which has come out uh, from Tencent. If you guys remember anything at all, been around Hunyuan uh, 2 came out and we just had an incredible time of uh, video generating, image generation, mostly video stuff. It was incredibly, uh, <laughs> incredibly not safe for work friendly um, model. We kind of blew some minds when it first came out. Now, we're going to talk a little about what this is and what this isn't. Um, are we going to be able to run it um, ourselves? Uh, where can we run it? And what? Um, it actually is what's a little bit different about this. So we're going to fairly quick, fairly quick video uh, here, taking a quick look at that. But before we do that, thanks for liking the channel, subscribing, telling your friends about it. Um, AI with a friend is always better. So um, appreciate you guys bringing your buddies in. Um, get them over to Get Going Fast. Great place to start. We get you going fast. We got some free stuff to get you in the game. And then if you want to be part of the community, you can delve in as much as you want to be with quick installers and um, ways to get to things like Honey One Image 3 really quick. So, um, all right, with that said, let's uh, get to the yelling and uh, take a look a bit and find out what exactly are we doing here with this Honey One Image 3.0. Hmm. Okay, so as uh, we mentioned here, the uh, 3.0 has come out, and now I'm just going to come straight off the bat and let you know that we are not going to be running this locally anytime soon, okay? Unless you are some crazy startup where you have big machines, um, you are going to find that this is going to be way out of the realm of what we're able to do. Look at this. The GPU memory is going to be <laughs> greater than or equal to 380 gigabyte. Uh, video card. So it says the best performance you want four of these. So what is that? 80, 160, 240, so 320 gigabytes of VRAM and you can run this locally. Okay. Now, obviously we're not anywhere close to that. And because that number is so high, it's going to be a little bit difficult to uh, get these into a quantized format that is going to work for us as well. So for right now, we're going to be kind of out of the business of running this locally. But we are going to be able to go and run this on the website over uh, here at the Tencent site. So I actually was able to generate this cool video, uh, this cool image, which I'm going to use Juan 2.2 probably to turn into an actual image. But we're going to go and take a look over here, um, get you logged into this site so that you can play with this a bit um, and use it because it really is powerful. OK, I mean, really, this is actually really fantastic imagery there and that was my first shot okay but before we do that let's go ahead and talk about uh, a bit about what we're looking at here so <laughs> one of the things that we want to notice here is that this is called multimodal okay so obviously multi means many right and modal is different modes so there's different modes with this um to really just bring this down into a simple manner for you to comprehend essentially this is um, it's not a straight video model. It's not a straight image model. It is kind of a comprehensive, in a, in a sense, um, I want I want to be careful using the word chat model because when we think chat, we think chat GPT, but it's more like that than other video models, okay? So it's an LLM, okay? The difference is going to be this. This is going to be what's called an LLM model or a large language model like ChatGPT, like Grok, this kind of stuff. Now, it's not designed to have a back and forth to say, hey, I would like an image of this or that. And he goes, well, that sounds like a great image. I, I really would like to do that. Um, instead, what it's able to do is it's able to take those kind of words and um, what's called tokenizing it. We can talk a bit more about tokenizing here in a little bit. Um, and use it like a chatbot in the sense that it breaks these things down, each word down, and then builds this image in the same way that ChatGPT would build a sentence 
or build a, um, a paragraph. So it's creating images. So in other words, when we go over here and we create an image like this, normally what happens with our other, with our pure image or video models is this comes up with a bunch of uh, what's called noise. Okay. So think of it like um, if I was a, um, building a statue and I just had a big block, okay, a big block of marble. And what do I start doing? I want to create an image of, you know, of me I was sitting there before get going fast. And so, so it's going to look like this, but I just start to chip away everything that doesn't look like that, right? So you chip away everything that's not a finger and everything that's not a face. All of a sudden you start to chip it down until the image comes together. Okay. So this is our typical, uh, what's called our typical diffusion model. Okay. Uh, it starts with a butt, like a brick and it chips away all the little pieces. It starts with a bunch of noise, like on your TV, when you're not getting a station, all of that static is there. That's called noise. So it starts with that and it starts to just take, take it all away and it generates down. This is what's going to be called an auto regressive model. Okay. So you got two terms here. We've got diffusion model. Okay, that's our typical image generator, and we've got an autoregressive model. So what autoregressive models are going to do is they're going to be more like the chat GPT in that I'm going to type my words in there, okay, and it's going to take those words, it's going to tokenize it, okay, it's going to turn them into numbers, it's going to put up there, and then it's going to actually start creating this image piece by piece. So just like when I use chat GPT and I say, um, hello, good morning, how are you? And then it goes up and it picks one word. What's the most likely next word? It'll say, um, hi. And then the next likely word after that is I'm. And then the next likely word after that, doing. And the next likely word after that is great. You know, and so on. And it builds a sentence uh, based upon um, kind of probabilities and likelihoods. So this model is going to be doing the same thing. It's trained on sentences and actual words so that instead of just breaking it down like this, it's actually going to build it pixel by pixel. It's going to say when someone says that they want this particular thing, what's the likely, what's the likely first pixel? And if that's the next, what's the likely next pixel? And so on. And I mean, that's an incredible amount of work. You can imagine it's building it. It's literally building it pixel by pixel. Um, but it's going through this entire thing, building it bit by bit in a likely manner instead of chipping it away. Okay. So the other ways we define it, the diffusion model, we say what we want and it chips everything away until it kind of looks the way that it uh, believes it can do. And this way, it takes our sentences, it interacts with it as like an LLM, like a chat GPT or a Grok, and it actually comes through and builds it piece by piece. Okay, and just for clarity, I was using the concept of pixel by pixel, but it's actually building it chunk by chunk. So imagine a chunk is a bunch of pixels. Uh, like say we just kind of break this into a bunch of areas. Uh, we break the image into a bunch of areas. So it's actually building it um, more than just pixel by pixel, but groups of pixels by pixel, still incredible. But I want you to get the, the idea that it's building it piece by piece, block by block. Okay, and to break this down a little bit easier, uh, or bigger or whatever to help understand when we're doing something with a diffusion model, how they're trained. So this is autoregressive, but diffusion models, what they'll do is they're trained on whole images. So like we throw in a whole bunch of pictures of, let's say, um, robots or androids. We say, this is what an Android looks like. Okay. And maybe we throw in a whole bunch of pictures of surfboards and a whole bunch of pictures of uh, waves. Okay. So then we put these things, we say an Android on a surfboard, uh, in the ocean, you know, with what waves and it goes there and it goes, okay, I have all these, you know, millions, uh, pictures or thou hundreds of thousands, whatever, large amounts of images of androids and large amounts of waves. And it puts those things all together into a way that makes sense. Now, the way that the autoregressive works, like, cause, okay, again, let me just say the diffusion. We say, this is a dog. This is a cat. Okay. This is a robot. This is a surfboard. Okay, those are the things that we're telling it what it is. And then actually what it does is it, it does the opposite of creating it. It moves it backwards, okay, and it actually makes it fuzzy, okay? So it adds noise to it until you can't recognize it, and then it re undoes it. So that way it can actually learn saying, okay, how do we go from a bunch of noise to a dog? To go from a bunch of noise 
to a to a cat, okay? Because we started with a cat, we went to a bunch of noise, then we brought it back, and and we trained on this, okay? Now these auto regressive models are trained um, more on words, okay? So what it's going to do is it's going to tokenize um, certain aspects of the image. So as where with the diffusion models, I'm creating an entire dog. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to break things into words like tuft of hair, okay? Tuft of hair, um, water spray, uh, side of mountain. I'm going to break it into much smaller pieces that then I can pull together. So I'm saying, give me a picture of a dog on a boat with us, and it pulls out a dog, creates a dog, creates the boat, puts it together. But what this is going to do is it's going to say, I'm going to say, give me the dog, and the dog has a, a patch of white hair on the side of its head. Um, its ears are perked up. Uh, the boat um, has a leak on the side. There's a sign, and it's going to take all those things, and it's going to um, take those words. It's going to break those down, and it's going to bring each piece of those into and create this by this. And it says, if I have dog, and I have tuft of hair, and I have this and that, it's going to figure out how is the most likely way that these things are going to get together. Or in short, diffusion models are just bringing forth a whole image. And what these autoregressive models are doing is they're bringing in piece by piece. They're trained more like on words. Okay. And, and, and of course there's images, but what do these words mean? What are, what is the, the, the elements? They're trained more on what's the elements of the photo and how we put it together. And that, of course, means that you can actually get a lot um, clearer prompt adherence, okay? By prompt adherence, I mean when you type something in, you can actually get it to do more of what you actually wrote in because it's not just trained on a single image, right? If, if there's an image that has no idea what it is, it's not going to do a great job of doing it when you're talking about diffusion models, OK, if there's if I'm trying to get an image of something that has no idea what uh, been trained on that image, it's going to have a hard time recreating that. When we go into this, it's actually breaking it into pieces so it can put those small pieces together. Okay, think of it like um, Legos. If you have big Lego pieces, you can make something and it's cool, but you're a little bit more restricted when you have smaller pieces. It can be more detailed and fine into actually creating the thing that you have. Okay, so a lot of words just to say that Hanyuan Image 3.0 is an autoregressive model, okay, that um, is able to do fantastic model generation. Okay, so it's it's very, uh, very good. Okay, it is open source, so probably what we're going to see is more websites coming out that allow us to, um, to use this, okay. Um, that's probably going to be our real only way to do this is, you know, to pay for it or find some kind of free sort of thing for it. Now, if you do go over to getgoingfast.pro, you can find it here. Just it's uh, in the public here. So you don't even have to sign up and uh, you see it. You can test it on the platform. So um, just like I went over to here, oh, to here and made this, you can do the same thing. Now, I am going to tell you that when you pop this up, it's going to come up in Chinese the first time you do it. So you'll load it up and it's going to come like this. Now you can't see it on my screen here. Hmm, I wonder why you can't see that. Anyway, it, at the top here, it says uh, Chinese simplified um, or English. Let me see if I can make this so you can see this a little bit easier. Let's do this real quick. Okay, so you're going to notice over here it says Chinese or English. So I'm just going to click English and then it's going to pop up and then I'll be able uh, to see that. Now, um, you are going to have to sign up for the website. Okay. So it's a Chinese company. So just know you're signing up, you're giving them your information. Um, and what Chinese do with your information is not quite the same as what America does with your information. They have different rules, laws. Remember, that's the one thing I remember guys, these are different countries. Okay. Uh, they have different, uh, they have different governments, different laws about how they can handle stuff. So, I am saying that Tencent is a fantastic business and you very well much might want to go use them, which I did, but you're going to have to sign up. And just so you know, you're, you have to sign, you have to get an account to use this. You have to give them some of your information. Now, once you're in here, you can play around with it. I haven't played with it to see uh, um, how many generations they can get, but um, 
you know, I don't know. Let's find out. You've got obviously your aspect ratios you can play around with here. I change this to number one because uh, right now, if you click this, it will create two images for you. OK, um, if there is a limit on how much you can generate by doing two images, the thing you're you're rocking through your free stuff. Um, a little bit more fast than I personally would like. So I suggest you go down to that, play with this. I'm going to take this image. I love this image. You guys know how at the beginning of uh, these get going fast videos I have typically have, um, you know, like you saw it earlier, the, the robot on the skateboard. I'm going to see if I can turn this into one 2.2 and see if I can get some uh, image uh, movement out of this and we'll see what we can do. Great way to use on you want 3.0 right now okay uh i'm always looking for ways to say how can we take this stuff and actually use it on a practical level because i do really enjoy playing with it but like at some point i'm like well what can i actually do with it what can i actually build with it and um one of the things with all these image to video models that we haven't come out it's always garbage in garbage out the quality you put in is typically the quality you're going to get out and guys this is pretty um this is pretty high quality stuff here. So you can definitely get some great image to video things with your Hanyuan 3.0. Um, in summary, great new model coming out. Tense is awesome. I'm excited to see where this is going to go in the future. I would imagine that they will, maybe they'll come out with a lesser model that we can use on a consumer level, but you're definitely going to see this starting to hit the mainstream more often, kind of like how they did with Nano Banana. Uh, with Google and all that, like really great stuff. You can't really run it locally, but you can use it online. I would assume this will be the same. Um, they're building an ecosphere of excellent image and model generators uh, that um, hopefully doesn't leave us behind in the open source mark, but uh, certainly it will be available out there. And this is a great new way to, uh, to look into that. So once again, just head over to getgoingfast.pro and you can get the link here on how to test this on the platform right down there. There it is. All right. Well, you guys hang in there. Enjoy the rest of your summer here. We are coming to the end of it, but that just means that it's the season for soup. Movies on the TV and us sitting here just doing AI. So I'm actually kind of looking forward to the winter because it's a great time to really get into the hobby. And uh, like I said, Bring your friends on over, get them over to get going fast, and we will get them going fast. You guys hang in there, and we will catch up with you on the other side. Yo.